my hands turn into claws like a reaper. Hey, my name is Edwin Vicente Garcia. I grew up in a home with a mother that was a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ. And I had a father that didn't want to follow the things of God. My father will drink, he'll do drugs, sell drugs. He was living a life that I thought was the right life. I started seeing my father in and out of jail. My mother crying out to God. Hopefully my father would come to the right path. But little by little, alcohol, drugs started taking him more down and down until he lost everything. I was just drinking, just doing cocaine day after day. I even quit my job just to go do cocaine. When I woke up in the hospital, there was this young girl, nurse, telling me, Edwin, if you keep doing this, you're gonna die. And I got scared when she told me that, but I still didn't listen. I had a friend that she opened the doors of her home. And she had a friend that believed in some demonic force. As many know, La Santa Muerte. I asked the girl that believed in that, what is this? And she goes, well, it'll grant you whatever you wish. You know, it'll give you powers. It'll give you money, it'll give you power. So I made a pact with it at age 19 years old. Something weird started happening to me after that pact I made with that Reaper, with the Santa Muerte. It felt like I was being tormented, like a spiritual demonic force was around me that was putting fear in my life. Nothing normal. I felt like this was just off the natural. It was something different. It was something more spiritual. By September 16, I had an experience at our aunt's house, at my uncle's house, that I woke up at three in the morning. I went to the restroom. And in that restroom, I felt this cold feeling. As I'm washing my face, I look at myself in the mirror. When I looked at myself in the mirror, there was a black shadow over me. And when I saw that black shadow, I ran out of that restroom, ran into my uncle's and my aunt's room, cried out to them, Theo, Thea, help me. There's this thing, follow me. My aunt even got up and said, Edwin, are you on drugs again? I'm like, no, Thea, I'm not on drugs again. And I started crying out to God right there and asking God, God, deliver me. And I felt this peace when I cried out to God. And I was able to go back to sleep. But the next day, I called my mother. I told my mother, Mom, take me to that Christian recovery home you told me about, which is called Victory Outreach. I'm having these thoughts, negative thoughts of jumping out the car while my mom's going like 80 miles per hour in the freeway. I was fearing just to go to that home now. I got there like around 9 p.m. I accepted Christ. But now what God wanted me to do is to draw even closer to him to overcome these attacks that I was facing. And I remember that third day in that home, it wasn't over. I was hearing voices. I was in the second floor where there was a window open to my right. And I kept hearing a voice telling me, jump out the window, jump out the window, suicide. I keep hearing the word suicide in my mind. And I keep seeing visions of myself jumping out through that window. And I got so scared when I saw that vision and I ran downstairs where all these men were in the home and they all got up and they were like, what's wrong with you? And I said, I need prayer. There's something attacking me, something I can't stop. And you know, I, I keep hearing these voices and they all got up and started proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. And I felt this peace when all these men got up and prayed for me, but it wasn't over. That same night I fell asleep. I remember waking up at three in the morning again. I was scared. As I was scared, I talked to God that night and I, God, please let me rest. Then my body went through, through a cold, shaking sweat. Like my body was sweating something out. And as my body was sweating out, something deep inside my heart, I felt that voice. I, I heard the voice of God telling me, it's me, don't worry. And when I heard that voice telling me, it's me, do not worry. I fell back to sleep. The next day I woke up anxious, wanting to search for God, seek the kingdom of God. I wanted to read the Bible, I wanted to pray. Because when I cried out to God, God came right on time to deliver me from those attacks that I was hearing, that I was seeing. 
those visions were not in my mind no more. Now I had a vision to follow Jesus Christ. I was in the home for one year. After the home, I became a, a youth leader. I was faithfully serving God for two years. After two years, I fell down, went back to sin. I was like a dog that returned to its vomit, sleeping with girls, drinking, partying again, doing things I shouldn't be doing. Mine, I wanted to hurt people. I was angry, upset. I was looking for a bond. And next you know, years later, I find myself joining a motorcycle club, a brotherhood, where I felt accepted. In church, I felt like I was outcasted because I backslid. I felt like nobody wanted me in the church no more. I started facing felonies in my life, going to court, going to jail. I still knew there was God, but I kept ignoring God. And as I'm facing consequences in my life, going in and out of jail, I know it was because the decisions I made. So as I'm living this lifestyle, riding bikes, going state to state, leaving my family behind, doing things behind her back, Having a woman that loved me, I was walking away from God, backsliding, doing things that were not godly. And it felt ugly knowing that I knew the truth in Christ, but I ignored the truth. As I'm ignoring the truth as years are passing by, right? By March 7th, 2020, I had eight felony charges, an assault, bodily injury, gang enhancement, and four gun charges. And I remember being in jail that day in county, laying on my bunk. And I remember telling God that, that God, if you take me out of this one, I will serve you. And I got bailed out after March 7th. I got bailed out, my family, the mother of my kids. They were all there waiting for me at home. I remember hugging my girlfriend at the time, which she's my wife now, I remember hugging her, hugging my kids, and just shaking my head. I'm like, God, what am I doing? I felt like I was in that end of time. That my time was running out if I didn't repent. I was gonna go to Mexico, and my bell bond agent goes, yeah, you're, you're good to go. It looks like you don't have a court date, but let me check something. I have another email from the DA's office. And he opened up that message. It says, oh, Edwin Vicente Garcia's um, cases have the charge has been exonerated. And when I heard the word exoner exonerated, I was like, what do you mean exonerated? You know, I didn't know what it meant. So I had to look it up and they're like, yeah, your charges have been dropped. And I, when, when I heard my charges were that have been dropped, I still, I was in disbelief. I was like, nah, there's no way. And I remember a member in that motorcycle club I was in, he told me, hey bro, you're blessed. And I stepped back and I was like, well, God, you probably are blessing me. But I was still ignoring the signs what God was trying to do and catch my attention. I started feeling all this guilt, this shame, things that I'd done behind my, my woman's back, my, the mother of my kids, people that I disrespected, people that I mistreated, things that I'd done in my life that I know were not pleasing to God. That guilt took me to depression. That guilt took me to feeling like, God, I was not worth it no more. I was not worthy in God's eyes no more which the enemy was there to deceive me, make me feel like I didn't have a way back to God. I went for a whole week without eating, contemplating and taking my life away, thinking about suicide. I wanted to kill myself, but every try, time I attempt to kill myself, I couldn't do it. Something wasn't letting me. I told God, I'll give you my life again. I reconcile with you, my God. And as I'm reconciling with God that night, I just felt this weight off me. And I was like, okay, God, give me direction. Take me to go do your will, not my will no more. Because remember, I knew the word of God. And when I opened the scriptures to Revelation chapter two, verses four and five, look how far you've fallen. You've forgotten your first love. And when I read that, I started breaking down saying, God, I've walked away from you. I forgot my first love. My first love was you, God. 
the love that you gave me to reach out souls, to reach out those men in darkness, to reach out those that are sinners, that you brought me out of a sinful life too. As I'm reading the scripture, I'm just crying, telling God, God, let your will be done, not my will. Then January 2021 comes. I had a struggle, a fight between myself, a conflict. Now I had to leave a life behind that I liked, that I loved, a brotherhood that I loved. And when I read the scriptures, the scriptures said directly, you can't serve two masters. And when I read the scriptures, I was like, God, what are you telling me? That I got to leave this lifestyle behind? January 22nd of 2021, I took a big step to turn in all my affiliation, turn in all my patches where I was from. And I let them know I'm gonna serve God. And as I made that decision that day, when I spoke to God, I remember waking up that morning too, crying out, praying to God, God, let your will be done. But before that decision, my mom invited me to Mexicali in Mexico where she was going with these brothers in Christ to preach the gospel. And as my mom invited me to go to Mexico, she was going to this Christian, not Christian recovery homes, they were just recovery homes where the addicts, they take addicts, people that are trying to overcome their addiction. But there was Christians, brothers in Christ, preaching the gospel. And as I walked in, I seen these pastors preaching to these recovery men and women. Stop crying, because I just felt the presence of God talking to me there at that moment. And my mom was next to me, and God speaks to me again. He goes, Edwin, this is where I have called you. This is where I have called you to come and share the gospel to these men and women in these recovery homes, because they need Christ, they need God. But there was these brothers humbly going over there. Day after, every other Sunday, they were going there preaching the gospel. And I remember hugging my mom and telling my mom, thank you mom for bringing me here. Cause this is what God has called me to do. There was fear, but then the word of God started coming to me in those moments of time where it says, fear no man. Cause God doesn't want us to fear nobody. But fear God in a matter of reverence, of respect, of love, obedience. That's the fear that I'm talking about, God. Hey. Leaving the club behind, moving on forward. I still have a lot of love for them. I still pray for them. I know God has called many of them, you know, and chose many of them. You know, we got one of them co-founder you know that was in the club and now he's sharing the gospel testifying and God says first Corinthians 15 57 says thanks be to God that he gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord yeah, and Reese you know I work with them I'm his personal barber I travel with them you know God has opened doors there for me you know to to be there in, in the team with the the camp and by the grace of God I'm still there and you know, and I see God, you know, reaching out to, to Andy as well, reaching out to the men in the team. You know, I have a barbershop in Cathedral City next to Palm Springs called Victoria's Barbershop. You know, I have a business partner named Nate. I was able to take my dad to these recovery homes and one of the homes that I go preach in Mexico to testify and share the gospel about Jesus Christ. And now my dad has a job stable here in Mexico. He calls me every day. By the grace and the power of God, I see how God has delivered me to be able to be a vessel to reach out to the lost, to the hurting, to even be able to reach out to my father that I thought one time at one point in my life I was going to lose my dad because of his addiction. Christ did not come for the righteous. He came for the sinners. He did not come for the healthy. He came for the sick. Christ came here for the sick and for the sinners. And God could use you as a vessel. I've been born again, renewed by the grace and the power of God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, whoever's in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed and the new is here.